Hey, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, and good evening. Good evening. I am coming to you live from where I am. We're on Facebook Live, and we're actually on YouTube Live also. Uh, so you can join us in either space, or you can meet us right here on zoom however you choose to meet us tonight we're grateful that you are with us tonight god bless you and thank you guys for being on with us this is on the move to discipleship the midweek bible study saint luke baptist church in berryville virginia and uh we're grateful <clears throat> to be able to meet this way. Um, we're meeting like this tonight. I am uh, preparing for my, uh, I am I am preaching my, my uncle's eulogy uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, and uh, I just, I need some time to, to think and to ruminate and to, you know, have some space. And so thank you guys for uh, giving me the latitude to be able to do this tonight in this way. I'm grateful. Um, I've got to, I got to look between three screens tonight. Uh, so you'll see my head on a swivel tonight. Uh, we're going to pray and ask God to bless our time. And, uh, and we're going to dig into our lesson tonight. Please turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter four. That's where we are tonight, Philippians chapter four. Philippians chapter four. While you're turning, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for the gift of life and thank you for how you've kept us and preserved our lives even up until this moment. And Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to meet around your word. We confess and acknowledge that your word is holy. And we are but dust, but you promised the Holy Spirit would speak to us what he has received from you. And so, Lord, that's our prayer tonight, that as we engage your word, that you, by the power, person, and presence of the Holy Spirit, would illuminate our hearts and minds, give us divine inspiration, speak to us from your word tonight so that our lives would be made different and better. And Father, thank you for what you're going to do in our lives because of your word. We honor you, we bless you, and we give you praise. We respect and we acknowledge your presence now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, <clears throat> so once again, good evening and God bless you. To all of you who are with us, for all of you who are with us on Facebook Live, please like and share. Please like and share tonight. Like and share. Uh, and if anybody is with us on YouTube uh, Live, please um, give us a comment. Let us know you're in the room with us on YouTube Live. All right. Last time we were together, I didn't have my slideshow. Uh, and so I promised you that uh, tonight we would have it. And so I do have it. I want to recap. Uh, oh, in fact, before we get into it, of course, you know, if this is your first time joining us, this is how we uh, break out our lesson, um, discussion, discovery, and direction. Our discussion section is recap of the previous week's lesson. Discovery is where we engage the word of God to see what the Bible has to say about, uh, about um, our subject matter. And then the direction section is the take home piece, something for your consideration. Um, and uh, we're grateful. That's how we do it. Thank you, Touche. I see you on YouTube live. Uh, we also have a talk to me slide. Um, this is an opportunity for you to engage us in live and direct conversation. I'm not sure that we'll have one tonight, 
but we'll have some opportunities to engage with each other in conversation tonight. All right. Uh, and then you can access our syllabus by going to our website, stlukebcva.org. Click on the Living with Joy tab, Philippians Living with Joy, and then scroll down to um, tonight's entry, Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, uh, and uh, you can follow along in the notes with us. And so tonight in our discussion section, just want to recap where we've been so far in Philippians chapter 4. All right, where have we been so far? Paul has entreated the Philippian church to protect the unity of the congregation. Remember, we said uh, in our very first lesson uh, that there were uh, two prominent members of the congregation, two ladies, Euodia and Syntyche, who were um, at odds. I guess that's a good, good characterization of it. They were at odds and and it was causing people in the church to take sides. And Paul says, you guys need to be unified. Um, and so he says, you got to protect the unity of the congregation. And he said, the way to do this is through the discipline of prayer. Remember, he said, rejoice. And again, I'll say it, rejoice. Um, you know, he says, let your gentleness be known to all people. Then he says, be anxious for nothing. And then he says, in everything. He says, by prayer and supplication, or if you've got um, a different translation by prayer and petition, he says, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. All right. Now, this is what we got to remember about prayer. And uh, we're going to we're going to spend uh, a, we're going to give prayer a very serious focus this year at St. Luke Church. Um, remember that prayer is more than simply taking our list of wants, needs, and desires to God, all right? It's not just me going in with a laundry list of stuff. God, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to move in this place. Prayer needs the elements of adoration, supplication, and appreciation, all right? Adoration, before you start telling God what you want him to do. You need to spend time telling God who he is. You need to honor him. Remember in Matthew chapter six, Jesus says, when you pray, pray in this way. And he begins by addressing God as father. He says, our father who art in heaven, adoration. All right. And then supplication after, after you acknowledge God for who he is. Uh, then, then, you know, make your request known, right? And then appreciation with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, appreciation with thanksgiving. Take some time in your prayer to tell God, thank you in advance of him making a move, in advance of him doing anything, in advance of him supplying whatever it is that you're asking for, Tell him thank you in advance, all right? And the result of this is that the peace of God will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus, all right? Now, we said that the peace of God is a supernatural peace. This is the inward tranquility of the soul that only comes from God. This is peace that doesn't come from any other source other than God. This is the peace that comes from him. Remember when Jesus was speaking with his disciples there in that upper room, and he said to them, peace I leave with you. And then the very next thing he says is, my peace I give to you. And that's what we want. We want that peace of God, the peace that only Christ can give us. All right. And the key to all of this, the key to all of this is what dominates our minds. All right. The key to all of this is what dominates our minds. All right. And so this is how our chapter is broken out. Verses uh, one through nine, God's peace, verses 10 through 13, God's power, verses 14 through 23, God's provision. 
And that's how we look at Philippians chapter four in this study. All right. So tonight we pick up once again. In fact, we're closing out tonight verses one through nine. God's peace. Uh, so then, my dearly loved and longed for brothers and sisters, my joy and crown in this manner, stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I urge you, Odia, and I urge Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I also ask you, true partner, to help these women who have contended for the gospel at my side, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. All right, so here we go. God's peace, verses eight and nine. This is what I want you to get first. Peace involves the heart and the mind. All right, peace involves the heart and the mind. He says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your what? Your heart and your mind, your heart and your mind, all right? So the peace that comes from God is peace, watch this, that infiltrates the heart and the mind. I want you to get it. I want you to get it. If you don't have, if you got peace in your heart, but don't have peace in your mind, it didn't come from God. If you got peace in your mind and you don't have peace in your heart, it didn't come from God because this says that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall do what? Guard your heart and your mind. Look here, Isaiah 26 and three says this, you will keep the mind that is dependent on you in perfect peace for it is trusting in you. Got it? All right, King James Version for those of you that are more familiar with the King James, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? That is the peace that comes from God. That is the peace that comes from God. Everybody got it? Y'all please forgive me for one second. I have to turn my attention to, to my other device here because I got too much stuff on here and the memory is short. All right. All right, YouTube, I'm coming right back. Boom, there we go. All right, we should be back on YouTube live now. All right, so he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in him. You got it? We must realize that thoughts are real and powerful even though they cannot be seen, weighed, or measured. We must bring into captivity, get this, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Y'all got it? What I think about get it, what I think about needs to be in subjection to the obedience of Christ. So, so I got to bring my thought life, oh my God, into, watch this, the obedience of Christ. Get this. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses three through five. 
For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh, since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive, get this, to obey Christ. Let me stop right there for a moment. Let me stop right there for a moment. Let me get you guys to jump in here with me tonight. What, what, does, that, what does that mean to take every thought captive to obey Christ? Take every thought captive to obey Christ. Let's talk for a little bit right here. Facebook, y'all get in on this question. Uh, what, what does it mean to take every thought captive to obey Christ? Christ. Y'all talk to me tonight. Uh, hi, Pastor. This is LaPearl. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? All right. Um, I say that it, it means that, you know, those thoughts that, um, well, first of all, because you have to know the word of God, but um, those thoughts that go um, against the word of God, and we find our minds moving in that direction mm-hmm. is that we, we don't allow our minds to dwell there that we you know again refocus on on the word of god and the ways of god so that our minds are not dwelling on those things that are contrary to his word his will okay i get it so so let me let me let's let's expand a little further and i'm gonna keep you on don't don't turn off your mic yet so so who's in control of that is that something that that the holy spirit does for me or who's who's in control of that? I would say that we're in control of that. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly the, the the Holy Spirit working in us will bring to mind if, if our minds are going too far down the wrong path. But ultimately, we have control of where our mind dwells. Did y'all get that? I need listen, listen. I need you to get this tonight. This verse says that we take every thought captive to obey Christ. In other words, you have the ability, you can control where your thoughts go. You can control whether or not your thoughts are obedient to Christ. And listen, listen, I need to, I need to say this to us tonight. The Holy Spirit does not do everything for us. The Holy Spirit never does for us that which we can do for ourselves. Now, under the influence and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are empowered to take every thought captive to obey Christ. But I need you to get this. You have the ability to control this. Somebody on Facebook Live need to type in that comment section, that comment box right here. I have the power to do it. I have the power to do it. Don't fool yourself. Listen, don't fool yourself into thinking. Listen, don't fool yourself into thinking that you, that the Holy Spirit is going to do this for you. No, you take every thought captive to obey Christ. You have the power to do it. Mm-hmm. Amen. You have the power to take that thought captive. Are you with me? The Holy Ghost is not going to do that for us. Mm -hmm. Nope. That's your responsibility. You have the power to do it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Now, let me also say, let me just let me just also throw this in there since we right here that that the Holy Spirit is not going to do that for you. Get this. Neither is that hellish spirit going to do that for you. You have the power to take control over that as well. Come on, help me, somebody. You have the power to be in control of that thought. Amen, somebody. All right. We demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. 
all right? Those of us that feel like we don't have that within us, can I tell you something? You are what the Bible calls a carnal Christian. You are still living by the flesh. You're not living by the spirit. Take some time and read Romans chapter eight. My, my, my. All right, let's move on before I make somebody mad. No, let's stay here. No, let's move on. All right. So here we go. Look at verse eight of Philippians chapter four, verse eight of Philippians chapter. Y'all know I like to have fun. Philippians uh, chapter four, verse eight. Paul says, it's a great verse too, man. Paul says, whatever things are true, whatever things are honorable, whatever things are right, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, whatever is excellent, whatever is praiseworthy, think on these things. Y'all got it? Think on these things. Now, remember, remember there was a word that we looked at in the lesson early on that talked about being pulled in different directions. Y'all remember that? There's instability. You remember that word that says we're pulled in different directions? Y'all remember? All right. But look, spiritual stability is the result of how we think. Oh my goodness. Get this. Get this, as proper prayer is a priority, so should proper thinking be. People want to, you know, we, you know, folks want to want to pray right. Well, guess what? We also have to think right. If we get it, if we pray right, we can think right. If we think right, we can behave right. Oh, my. Eee. Romans 8 and 6. Now, the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Which do you want to govern your life? You want death to govern your life? Or do you want life and peace to govern your life? All right, if you want life and peace to govern your life, then watch this, then you need the mindset of the spirit. And Paul gives us the formula to begin this kind of thinking. Y'all got it? Listen, anybody ever heard of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson? He's a, a famous poet writer. Ralph Waldo Emerson said this. I don't know if you've ever heard this before. As a matter of fact, uh, where, I, uh, where I used to work in, in the office where I used to work, I had a whiteboard and uh, this was this was one of the um, this was one of the quotes. I had I had a whole bunch of quotes on my whiteboard. This was one of the quotes that I had on my whiteboard. It says, so a thought reap an action. So an action, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, reap a destiny. You got it? You got it. And then there was this, there was this, um, this uh, newspaper editor in Texas who kind of took this thought and embellished upon it. Uh, and he said, watch your thoughts for your thoughts become actions. Watch your actions, for they become your habits. Watch your habits, because they become your character. Watch your character, for it determines your destiny. Oh my. And listen, here it is right here. It all starts with a thought. It all starts with a thought. Did, did y'all catch that? Your destiny.
starts with a thought. My, my, my. My, my, my. I can't chapter and verse it, but there's a verse in Proverbs that says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. They, they, we don't raise that one in the Baptist church, but in, in, in Kojic and in, in uh, Pentecostal and Jesus only Bible way, uh, you hear that all the time, my God. So I need you to get this tonight. I need you to get this tonight that your destiny starts with a thought. Here we go. Paul gives eight godly virtues upon which we should focus. Eight godly virtues upon which we should focus. He says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, whatever is excellent, whatever is praiseworthy, all right? Eight things he says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, whatever is excellent, whatever is praiseworthy, he says, think on these things. Now, I'm just going to unpack these just briefly, all right? He says, whatever is true. Now, when he says true, what he's really talking about here is reading, analyzing, and meditating on the word of God. Get this, get this. When you meditate, when you read, when you analyze, when you study the word of God, it has a profound effect upon your mind. Woo. What does that verse in Romans 12 say? Ver, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, I urge you, brothers, this from the NIV, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, that you present yourself as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, and this is your spiritual act of worship. Verse 2, and do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do I do it? It is by the word of God. Get this tonight. This is more than saying change what you think about. This is saying get into the word of God. You want to change your mind? You got to get into the word of God. You got to read the word of God. You got to study the word of God. You got to eat the word of God. You've got to digest the word of God. You got to take it in for all that it says. Are we together? <clears throat> the psalmist says in Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night, and the result is he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, his leaf shall not wither, he'll bring forth his fruit in his season, whatever he does shall prosper as a result of being in the word of God. Y'all got it tonight? So the first thing he says is, think about what is true. <clears throat> Excuse me. We know that the word of God is true. Jesus said in John 17 and 17, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. That's King James Version. Let's move on. Oh, wait a minute. No, let's not move on. Let's, let's back up for a second. Well, I want to say something here that's real important. <clears throat> we want to talk about uh, thinking about whatever is true. Get this. Get this. Uh, Got to be careful that we don't spend our time thinking about what is not true. We got to be careful thinking about what is a lie. Listen. 
what was the thing that the devil presented to Adam and Eve in the garden that caused them to get off full, off, 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 off track? He presented them with a lie. He said, did God really say? Well, the truth was, yes, God really said it. <clears throat> but his ability to call into question the veracity of what God said caused them, watch this, to be, thank you for that word, uh, uh, Melanie, caused them to be deceived. And many of us, my God, are focusing too many thoughts on deception and not truth. He says, whatever is true. You need to get this tonight. You don't need to listen to what the devil says because he is the father of lies. That's John 8, 44. He is the father of lies. Don't focus on the lie. Focus on what is true. Not your truth, what is true. Oh, my God. I wish, listen, I wish in 2023 that that little phraseology would go away. I wish it would find some death in 2023, that whole my truth, your truth. No, truth is truth. And truth is always true. Help me, somebody. It is neither subjective. No, it, if it's true, it's true. Come on, somebody. Y'all got it tonight? All right, I got to move on because I don't have much time. If it's true, it's true. Talking good tonight. Y'all ain't saying nothing. All right, so he says, whatever is true. Let's keep moving forward. Then he says, whatever is honorable. Whatever is honest. Whatever is true, whatever is true, whatever is honest, whatever is honorable. Now, what we're talking about here is that we've got to focus our attention on what is heavenly, what is worthy of all, what is worthy of adoration and praise, what is worthy of respect. Um, I don't have it listed here, but you might write down uh, Colossians 3 and 1 which says, since you have been raised with Christ, set your mind on things above where he is seated at the right hand of God. All right? That's what's honorable, things that are heavenly, things that are worthy of all, things that are worthy of adoration, things that are worthy of praise, things that are worthy of respect. We have to turn our attention that way. Listen, and this word think, this word think, I, I, I want you to I want you to really understand what this word think means. This word think is not just um something that we do in passing. This is to ruminate on. All right, ruminate. That's a big word that means to think over and over again, to always consider it. You know what I mean? And so, and so. You know, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not suggesting at all that we should be, you know, uh, so super spiritual in our thinking uh, that, um, you know, that we can't we can't function in life, that we can't do the things that we have to do every day. But what I'm saying is, is that heaven should permeate our thoughts so much that that the awe of God, the wonder of God, the adoration of God, the praise of God, our respect for God should permeate our thoughts so much. Get this, that it drives how we interact with people. Woo, my God, my God, my God. So we think on what is honorable. We do not focus our attention on dishonorable things and permit them to control our thoughts. So he says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable. Next, he says, whatever is right, whatever is right, or the word that the word that's used is just. All right, whatever is just, sense of justice, whatever is right. 
listen, whatever is in harmony with God's eternal standards as revealed in scripture, we should be focused on that, whatever is right, whatever is just. Y'all got it? And please understand that an element of justice is fairness. Wow. Wow. You can't listen. You can't be just and not be fair. Y'all got it? If it's right, it's fair. If it's right, it's not biased in either direction. Help me somebody. All right? So whatever is right, whatever is right. All right? So we got, what is that, three so far. Whatever is true, we got whatever is honorable or honest. Third, whatever is just or whatever is right. And once again, right is what is in harmony with God's standards. All right. He has shown you, oh man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to love justice, to do mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Whatever is in harmony with God's eternal standards. All right, you got it? Let's move forward. Let's keep pushing forward. He says, whatever is pure, whatever is pure. Now, you ready? When we talk about pure, we, we're talking about what is holy, what is morally clean, what is undefiled. Let's put a pin right here real quick. And y'all talk to me tonight. What do you know? <clears throat> to be pure? What, what do you know to be holy? What do you know to be morally clean? What do you know to be undefiled? Talk to me. Oh, y'all want to stay away from this um, one. Go ahead, Mr. Burrow. Um, anything that has no sin um, would be considered... Um, you know, holy, undefiled, so free of sin. Okay. All right. Thank you. I see that Melanie on Facebook Live. She says God's word. Somebody write down Psalm 19, verse 7. <clears throat> Psalm 19, verse 7. Says the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making the wise simple. The word of God is pure. You got it? It's undefiled. It's morally clean. It is pure. The word of God, every testimony, hallelujah, is sure. Every word of God is pure. Y'all got it? All right. <clears throat> All right. Gee, I don't know what happened on this slide. I apologize. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
He says, whatever is lovely, get this. Focus on what the Bible says is pleasing, attractive, and amiable before God. Hey, I see Sister Tootie Clark is on. God bless you, Miss Tootie. Good to see you on. Listen, for lovely, I want you to write down Psalm 84. All right. All right. Now, we've looked at what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure. All of these, all four of these point right back to the word of God. Right? Now watch this, whatever is lovely, what, focus on what the Bible says is pleasing, attractive, and amiable before God. Look, when you turn to Psalm 84, and I want, I want you to turn there because I want you to see what this says. <clears throat> Psalm 84. Psalm 84, and I'm, I'm pulling this up on, <clears throat> excuse me, on, uh, on my device here, Psalm 84. Psalm 84, what is lovely? Look at how this psalm begins. Because, look, just about anybody in church know how it ends. Especially where my ushers at. Especially my ushers. I had rather be a doorkeeper. All the ushers are shouting right now. They all quickened as soon as I said it. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Psalm 84 and 10, than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Lord, have mercy. Y'all know that verse right there. Y'all, we shout on that verse. I had rather, oh, cue the music. Come on, somebody. <laughs> right? But look at how this starts out. Look at what the psalmist says. The psalmist says, how lovely is your dwelling place. And Paul says, think about whatever is lovely. Look, the psalmist says in Psalm 84, I long to be in your presence. In fact, he says, my soul even faints for the courts of the Lord. Woo. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Focus that attention on being amongst the saints of God. I know we living in COVID time. Listen, COVID ain't going nowhere, so you need to come back to the building. Lord have mercy. COVID ain't going nowhere. We done learn how to live with the flu. We done learn how to live with polio. We done learn how to live with, with all of this, you know, all of these other viruses and things. We've learned how to live or we are learning how to live with COVID. Come back to the building. How lovely is your dwelling place, oh God? What does the psalmist say here? And we sing it in song. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. You can't sing that if you ain't coming. Woo! Come on and talk here, son. 
You can't, listen, that's not your testimony. Your mind is not on, get this, it's not on what's lovely. Whatever things are true, whatever things are honorable, whatever things are right, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely. Y'all getting this tonight? Oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> I blew that slide. All right. Then he says, whatever things are of good report, whatever things are of a good report. Now, I want to help you here. Get this. By good report, we're talking about what is highly regarded or well thought of. Get this. Not idle talk. Oh, boy. Not idle talk. I want to give you some verses to look at. If you don't have the syllabus, I would encourage you to go to our website and get the syllabus so you can see these verses because they're going to go a little faster tonight than you might be able to write them down. All right. So the first few verses come out of Proverbs, Proverbs 14, 23. I'm not reading them. I'm just giving you the list so that you can go back and read them for yourself. These are verses that talk about idle talk. Proverbs 14, 23, Proverbs 18, 21, Proverbs 20, 19. All right. Then we got Matthew 12, 36 and 37. That's the verse that says that we'll have to give an account of every idle word that we speak. Then there is Ephesians 4.29 and Ephesians 5.4. Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but speak that which is wholesome and edified builds up. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Listen, that Ephesians verse right there is going to help some husbands and some wives. Oh my. Because too many times particularly in the marriage relationship, but in any relationship, oftentimes what happens is, watch this, we have difficulty because we don't know how to talk to each other. Wow. Not only, not only do we not know how to talk to each other, we don't know how to listen to each other. We don't know how to listen to each other. We don't know how to listen for each other. Oh my God. And, and what I mean by listening for the other person means that what I'm hearing, watch this, watch this, that I receive in my heart, not just in my head. It doesn't just hit my ears, but it hits my heart. Oh my God. That's a whole nother lesson for another day. But this word says <clears throat> that we ought to be focused on whatever is of good report. So we're not, it's not, listen, we're not rehearsing idle speech. One more, Colossians 3 and 8. And Colossians 3 and 8 is going to tell us what we need to get rid of. There's some things in there that it says we need to take off, that we need to let go of. Come on, somebody. All right. So rather than focusing on, watch this, on the idle stuff, the stuff that doesn't do anything for it, that doesn't help us, that doesn't edify, that doesn't build up. He says, what, he said, listen, whatever is of good report. Are we together? Now, listen, please understand. 
That doesn't mean that we ignore what's happening in the world around us. But what it does mean is that in the face of the things that are happening around us, watch this, that we give our focused attention to thinking about what is good, even though there's crazy stuff going on around us. Because our ability, watch this, our ability to find, watch this, to find a good report in those situations will govern how we respond to those situations. Did you get that? Because remember, we said early on that our destiny begins with a thought. And so if I can watch this, if I can focus my attention on a good report in the midst of what's happening around me is bad, I can respond in a better way to the bad stuff. Talk, Reverend. Y'all got it tonight? Ooh, I'm almost out of time. Let me hurry up. Then he says, whatever is excellent, whatever is praise worthy. And those two things really speak for themselves. Whatever is excellent, whatever is praise worthy. You got it? Whatever is excellent, whatever is praise worthy, think on these things. The key to godly living is godly thinking. The key to godly living is godly thinking. Many of us have difficulty in this area of godly living. And the reason primarily is because we don't spend any time doing any godly thinking. We would much rather our minds be cluttered with trash Woo! than to spend time. I don't know why we feel like it takes too much energy to think on godly things. I don't know why we say it, it costs too much energy to do godly thinking. Listen, it takes more energy To try to watch this, to try to formulate your mind around that garbage. It takes more energy. Oh God. All right, let's keep moving forward. Proverbs 4, 23 and 24. Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. Don't let your mouth speak dishonestly, and don't let your lips talk deviously. Get this, we cannot afford to waste our mind power on thoughts that tear us down or that would tear others down if these thoughts were shared. Did you catch that? Don't waste your mind power Whew. on thoughts that tear you down, right? But look, don't waste your mind power on thoughts that are going to tear somebody else down if you say it. Whew. Oh, man. Y'all got it? We almost there. Once again, Paul encourages the Philippians to follow his example. Verse 9, we almost there. He says, what you've seen and heard, what you've experienced, the same you got to do. So just do it. Notice through these, this series of verses, notice in this verse, the following. Get this. These verses that we've looked at, verses one through eight, right, well, actually one through nine, right praying leads to right thinking. 
right thinking leads to right behavior. I'm gonna leave that up just for a second because I know somebody is writing this down. Right praying leads to right thinking. Right thinking leads to right behavior. Listen, since y'all are at home, y'all don't mind if I just go a few minutes into the eight o'clock hour, do you? I mean, you, you ain't got to drive home. You already at home. So, I, you know, all I'm intruding upon is your television time. And some of y'all probably got it on anyway. All right. Right praying leads to right thinking. Right thinking leads to right behavior. Remember we said early on, guard your thoughts because they become your actions. Watch your actions because they become your habits. Watch your habits because they become your character. Watch your character because it becomes your destiny. Right praying leads to right thinking and right Thinking leads to right behavior. You want to change the behavior? You got to change your mind. You want to change your mind? You got to change your prayer life. All right. I tried to give y'all time to write that down. Paul closes this section by offering himself as an example once again. Look at what he says. He says, do what you have learned from me. Do what you have received from me. Do what you have heard from me. Do what you have seen in me. Now, get this tonight. He says, do what you have heard from me. What he says is, what he says is, you got to follow the process that I've instructed you with. You got to follow the process. Somebody on Facebook Live, would you do this for me? And just right there in the comments, follow the process. got to follow the process. Paul says, I've laid out instruction for you. Do that. What, listen, what, what winds up happening for many of us is we feel like because we've been here 10 minutes longer than everybody else, can't nobody else tell us nothing. But if we would simply follow the process, oh my God, it would put us in a space, my God, to do and accomplish what God has called and created us to do. Come on, somebody. He says, do what you have learned from me. But then he says, do what you have received from me. All right? When he says received, what this means, because some of y'all are thinking, well, if I learned it, I received it. No, learning is a head piece. But receiving it is a heart piece. I possess it. All right. I have to possess the process. You want to write that in that comment box there. Possess the process. First, you got to follow the process. Then you got to possess the process. You have to take ownership of it. It is no longer their information, but you now own it. It is my information to do with it what I'm supposed to do with it so that I can get to the place where I'm supposed to be. My, 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 my. Are y'all in this room with me tonight? Woo! 
I have to possess it for myself. I follow the process. Now I have to possess the process. I have to make it mine. Possess the process. Possess. Possess. P-O-S-S-E-S-S. -S -S. Possess the process. I got to follow the process. I got to possess the process. Y'all got it. I see you, Mother Pain. Mother Pain says she is in the room with me tonight. I, I got it. I got it, Mother Pain. I see you in here. All right. So he says the thing that you have learned from me, the thing that you have received from me. Then he says the thing that you have heard from me. Now, this one is interesting. This is interesting. The things that you have heard from me. Now, this is why I say this is interesting because um, you know, just reading it the way it's given, learned and received, you figure you had to hear it, all right? But this goes beyond, get this, beyond what uh, Paul has taught them in person. This has more to do, get this, with what other people's uh, what other people's perspective of Paul is. Oh my goodness. In other words, Get this. In other words, what's his credibility with everybody else? Is he solid with everybody else? Oh, my goodness. All right. So you got to consider what are people's perspectives. All right. So we got the process. We got the possess. Now we got people's perspectives. Wow. Wow. Does he say one thing to the Philippian church and then say something else to another church? Absolutely not. He's consistent. He doesn't talk out of both sides of his mouth. Are y'all getting this tonight? Perspective. We got to process it. We got to possess it. Then we got to get the proper perspective. And then he says, the things that you have seen in me. Seen in me. What are the personal observations? Personal observations. Personal observations. Y'all know this guy is solid. You know that his words and his life match up. Oh, God. His words and his life match up. He says, what you've seen in me, what you've heard about me, what you've received from me, what you've learned from me, do that. And what is the result? The God of peace <laughs> will be with you. You got it? Finally, we must learn the word, receive it, hear it, and do it. We must learn the word, receive it, hear it, and do it. James. 122, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. That's Philippians 4, 1 through 9. We will pick up next time at verses 10 through 13. And so I am encouraging you tonight, if you've not done so, to read Philippians chapter four, all right? Before we go tonight, of course, we share our affirmations, Ephesians chapter two and verse 10. I am created with a purpose, for a purpose, on purpose. 
I can't wait to get back to St. Luke so that I can uh, finish this series that we're preaching from this verse. And then our second affirmation is from Luke 17, 21. The kingdom of God is within me. Listen, I want to thank you guys for hanging on for these extra 10 minutes over eight o'clock. Uh, thank you guys for hanging in with me tonight. And um, um, thank you for being on with us tonight. Would you please Please hold my family in prayer. Um, particularly, would you pray for me as I have to preach uh, this, uh, this service for my uncle? Um, a bit of a challenge for me personally. Um, and uh, I've been trying to be quiet and hear from the Lord. Um, and my emotions are always uh, in the way. Um, so I really solicit your prayers. I appreciate you guys praying for me. Um, thanks again for joining us tonight. And we look forward to seeing you the next time uh, we come together uh, for the study of the word of God. Uh, I pray God's blessing be upon you tonight and that his grace would cover you in all that you do until we meet again. God bless. You guys have a great night.